Spring in Michigan brings windy weather, and what's better in spring than flying a kite? So this year, our geometry classes are building kites as a part of their lessons. Today we have both our geometry teachers, Mrs. Hag and Mrs. Booth, here to talk about the kite project. Although this is a fun activity to get students to get involved with each other, what concept do you want your students to learn from building kites? Well, we spent a pretty significant part of the year working with two-dimensional triangles. So we built the two-dimensional triangles as the base of the kite. Those turned into tetrahedrons. And then we're going to be able to calculate surface area, volume of the small tetrahedrons compared to the bigger ones. And then also we'll be able to determine the height that the kites were able to fly at based on um, the length of the kite string and then also the distance between the kite and the person flying the kite. So when we do the kite building, the main focus is indirect measurement because we do lots of problems with indirect measurement and this would be one application. So we want to be able to determine the height of the kite by measuring uh, two sides of a triangle. So the, the kite string will be the hypotenuse and the distance between a couple people on the ground will be a leg and we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the height of the kite. Since this is some students first year building and hearing about kites, how long have you been doing this activity for? This is my second year doing the project, but um, another teacher in the building has been doing the project for quite a few years. So um, I personally have been doing the kite unit for about 11 years. Um, Bonnie Thompson and Matt Simmons used to do the kites. They used to make kites in the middle school in eighth grade pre-algebra years ago before I taught at the middle school. And when I went to the middle school but was when Bonnie retired. And um, so Matt Simmons and I did the kite unit and I changed it a little bit. So at that time the concepts were like dimensional analysis, still the Pythagorean theorem but also um, some similarity theorems. Um, where in the high school it's more indirect measurement, some different similarity theorems, and then also as an enrichment I'll try and incorporate the, the concept of fractals in it. So when I came to the high school, by that time we had the common core math and we had uh, Eureka math books in the middle school. We couldn't do the kites anymore and hadn't for a couple years, so I resurrected it when I got geometry here and applied it to our concepts. Students may like building kites rather than doing written work better, but how do you think building kites often benefits students better? I think um, the engagement is much higher when you can build something and use your hands to do it and see it come together. It's just a more engaging way to, to learn the math. So because we used to do it in the middle school and we can do it in the high school, I think it's a really nice way to um, do a little bit of recall and extension for um, PSAT prep for the freshmen and the sophomores because there are those concepts still that we can talk about. And, um, and so I, I think that by physically building the kite when, when we use a vocabulary like vertices and faces and edges and we still use the middle school vocabulary like points and sides and triangles. Instead of saying tetrahedrons, I say pyramid. It, it kind of synthesizes from the middle school geometry to the high school geometry right before the PSAT. So I, I think being able to have them do that self-talk and talk in their teams and use that vocabulary can help them recall some skills that they knew from, you know, eighth grade. And also, um, it really, I hope, hits home the fact that indirect measurement is something that, that is useful. It's not just, oh, if you want to know what the surface area of a lake is and you can't, um, swim across the lake with a measuring tape, but um, it's, it's something, they want to know if their kite flew higher than other people's. So I think that helps it hit home. Thank you, Mrs. Hag and Mrs. Booth. I hope you have a fun time and your kites fly successfully. I'm Krista Basic for M6, your hometown station.